So this is after action report two. This is for the airfield domination on Berlin on the 23rd of August. Uh, this one's gon not going to be that long. There's only about three, four instances that I identified that uh, didn't go too well for us. And this game, for the first half of the match, because it lasted about 11 minutes, it was uh, it was pretty close. It was almost neck and neck. Now, at the start here, because uh, this is the first time playing with Taybars, usually the second guy out of our four, uh, Rock and Osprey, and usually uh, Equitus, they'd be going for A. And every time that I usually play this map, it's almost always been with uh, Gable or Equitus. So e either or one of them will come with me down to this side. Now the thing about Berlin is that the airfields are uh, pretty much almost equidistant to both teams' air spawns. It's not the case for the rest of the double landers in the game. I'm pretty sure this is the only exception. Uh, we play another match after this on Mazdaq and that one, that one was a pretty good game. I have uploaded that already. But here, even though they're, they're technically equidistant, both sides sort of like tacitly agree that the one uh, as they spawn into that's immediately in front of them because their spawn points are at an angle. And whenever we spawn on this side here on the, the northern side, we're automatically facing A. So it's, it's sort of like mutually assumed and agreed that this is ours and that this is the enemies and usually as both teams deploy uh, both teams gravitate towards these airfields respectively even though the distance between them are almost the same it's just slightly slightly further away so what i usually do is i go for the the so-called enemies airfield try either take it or deny it from them and here uh i i'm the only one that goes in for this play right here usually i always have somebody as i've said before with me and that makes it a lot easier so, slight mistake here, but uh, it's the first time the Taybar is flying with us, flying a double lander match, especially on this map as well, like this. So, I no, no real complaints, but uh, the way we usually want to play this out is we at least send two guys to the enemy uh, airfield. Um, that brings me to the boss dog game that we played after this. Uh, there's not much reason to have two guys go for the closer airfield on the other double lander maps. The enemy usually doesn't have time to get all the way to intercept because not a lot of people are actively trying. If we're up against organized opposition, then definitely we'd put two guys on our airfield. But uh, the, the airfield that's closest to us, we, should, we only technically need one guy. He goes in, lands, and then hits the ground targets. We should stack three guys on the enemy airfield. That way, it gives us the best chance to deny the enemy airfield and get the very large ticket lead at the beginning of the game. That, that's for the other maps, not for this map. Yeah, uh, on this map, two, two, two is good enough, and that's fine. Um, the other thing I wanted to cover there was a play that me and Rock make further on here. Yeah, this one here. So this, what we're about to capture here, uh, it doesn't go that well. Uh, I tell Rock to go for the B-38, and uh, my replay system is still not working out. Uh, I managed to find the War Thunder replay, but that one doesn't have the timestamps, so if, every time I try to do this, I always have to like restart the replay and then fast forward. If I miss it, then I have to restart it again. But uh, on my replay here, uh, there are no shots being exchanged. I assume there are shots being exchanged. But uh, even even though you didn't get the kill here, uh, I'm, I'm going into land. This A20 here that's on the airfield, he's, he is not a threat in any of the scenarios that's going to play out here. Even if a rock misses the P38 here, uh, I still have a slight chance to get in here because P38 is not that good of a shot. And if I make the landing really short, if I approach the runway at the maximum edge of the capture zone, uh, I should be able to get it. Uh, but he does still get me. And the A20 here, he he took the full landing strip to land, right? And now he's taking off. Uh, he's burned all his energy, and he's an A20. Compared to everybody else here that we have to fight, he is not a threat in most of the situations. He has no energy, 
is their strike aircraft, and we're engaged now with about three more single-engine uh, fighters, two 109s as well. So once the P-38 passes, this A-20 is no longer a threat because he can't even like turn around at this point. He, is, he has no energy whatsoever. He has to take off like from from a standstill, basically. The rest of the guys here, however, they are coming in at like warp speed and they're gunning for us right now. So having going after A-20, uh, not that good. But of course, it doesn't matter because now we've got like five guys coming in after us and the P-38 is now going to come after me. I'm not going to be able to get the capture here and we're both going to go down. But uh, even if, if it was a little bit less, if it was just one guy, the single engine fighter takes priority. He's the bigger threat and not the guy that's taking off, especially the twin engine guy. Now, as we respawn in, we're re-approaching the airfield. The B-38 down here, he's crashed. He's on the airfield. And uh, what I'm trying to do here is that I can go in, because he's all the way on our side now. I can easily strafe him and then immediately cap and get the airfield here. Uh, at the beginning here, we both go in and strafe the B-38. Uh, this is fine because the other two fighters, they are, they are about 600 meters away, f far enough, that they can't get their weapons envelope onto either of us as we approach. But if they were any closer, uh, since I'm the one going into land, the free fighter here, he needs to engage uh, either one of the uh, single engine fighters. And in this scenario right here, it's uh, pretty easy because this 109 is heading away. He's come in, he's landed, he's going away. 38's down low. This guy right here is an immediate threat because he still has energy and he's coming right for us. But as I say here, uh, as we dive in here and engage, uh, they're, they're far enough away that even though both of us go in to attack and take it out, uh, we have time to reset and re-engage the next two fighters. And we kill them both and we cap the airfield. So that, that all goes good. Now, what happens here is that there's a P-400 that's closing in, and I don't believe Osprey sees him, because Osprey just came in and got two kills right here that were engaging this gladiator, and Rock's coming into land now. And uh, usually what happens here, if I'm, I'm in this situation with Osprey, I always turn right. I always make sure I'm headed towards the enemy spawn, just in case that I've missed anybody that's coming in. But Osprey, Osprey doesn't, I don't think he sees, and I don't think he's played this position, uh, this scenario a lot. I've played it a lot. I've been in his situation quite a lot where I've cleared the airfield for Rock to come in. And uh, he turns left and he doesn't see the 400. And uh, 400 comes in, kills Rock <laughs> as he's trying to make the land. And the gladiator here, I'm pretty sure he crashes. So, the slight, slight uh, mistake here on this part here. But after that, uh, after this moment here, we manage to get both airfields and we hold them both and we win the game. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's all I've got to say for this match in particular.